Greetings, friends, and welcome to this uh, Parktown North Sunday service. We thank God that we are able to gather together and worship God. It is supposed to be spring. At least today, the sun has started shining brightly as it did yesterday as well. So maybe, just maybe, it's time we jump into the pool or have those water games we would have to say hello spring. As we begin the service, we will ask Barbara to kindly lead us with the prayer for the candle for peace, hope, and justice. God of all truth and wisdom, we acknowledge before you the painfulness that truth can bring. It destroys our trust in people who have, have not taken their oaths of office seriously. It makes us suspicious and cynical as we ask the question, who can we trust? And yet we want the truth to set us free. We hear your word to us. If you hold to my teaching, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. It seems to take so long for truth to prevail. Our political landscape is littered with commissions of inquiry, investigations, suspensions, and we wait so long for justice to prevail. But we thank you for the courage of those who speak out against falsehood and injustice. We give you thanks, O oh God, for our independent judiciary, which stands tall. We thank you for our investigative journalists and press freedom. We hear your word to us. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. We continue, friends, in that spirit of prayer. <clears throat> and so, Lord of truth, as we come before you this morning, fill our hearts and our minds with your presence. Guide us as we seek to understand you better. Find us as we have lost ourselves in the things we have entangled ourselves with. Open, O oh God, our hearts and our minds that as we hear your word, we would wrestle with that which you wish to bring to us. Speak to us the truth that brings life, the truth that guides, the truth that builds. In many ways, oh God, we have failed you and failed ourselves, but you continue to extend your hand of grace to us. We thank you for the love that Jesus Christ has taught us. And we ask that it would continue to abide within us as we relate to one another, relate to those whom we do not know, and those whom society has taught us to consider as other. Bind us with your love, O oh God, and build us to be a community that proclaims thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
May that be seen in us. Hear these are prayers through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Friends, we are going to ask Umamujun uh, to read for us our Old Testament reading, which is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verses 1 to verse 14. Exodus 12, verses 1 to verse 14. And then Paul will read for us Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18, verses 15 to verse 20. Matthew 18, verses 15 to verse 20. The reading is headed, The Passover. The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in Egypt. This month is to be the first month of the year for you. Give these instructions to the whole community of Israel. On the 10th day of this month, each man must choose either a lamb or a young goat for his household. If his family is too small to eat a whole animal, he and his neighbor may share the animal in proportion to the number of people and the amount that each person can eat. You may choose either a sheep or a goat, but it must be a one-year-old male without any defects. Then, on the evening of the 14th day of the month, the whole community of Israel will kill the animals. The people are to take some of the blood and put it on the doorposts and above the doors of the houses in which the animals are to be eaten. That night, the meat is to be roasted and eaten with bitter herbs and with bread made without yeast. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled, but eat it roasted whole, including the head, the legs, and the internal organs. You must not leave any of it until morning. If any is left over, it must be burnt. You are to eat it quickly, for you are to be dressed for travel, with your sandals on your feet and your stick in your hand. It is the Passover festival to honor me, the Lord. On that night, I will go through to the land of Egypt, killing every firstborn male, both human and animal, and punishing all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood on the doorposts will be a sign to mark the houses in which you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you and will not harm you when I punish the Egyptians. You must celebrate this day as a religious festival to remind you of what I, the Lord, have done. Celebrate it for all time to come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If your brother sins against you, go to him and show him his fault. But do it privately, just between yourselves. If he listens to you, you have won your brother back. But if he will not listen to you, Take one or two other persons with you, so that every accusation may be upheld by the testimony of two or more witnesses, as the scripture says. And if he will not listen to them, then tell the whole thing to the church. Finally, if he will not listen to the church, treat him as though he were a pagan or a tax collector. And so I tell all of you, what you prohibit on earth will be prohibited in heaven, and what you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. And I tell you more, whenever two of you on earth agree about anything you pray for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three come together in my name, I am there with them. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, friends, for reading those passages for us. These two passages seem to not talk to each other, but somehow I, I'd like to bring them together around the idea that I think Matthew seems to be, the, to be developing from the time 
that Jesus said, on this rock, I will build my church. It seems to me there is a community that we are being called to be. It seems to me that God is wanting to build a type of community that knows how to deal with each other, that knows how to relate to one another, a community that knows how to bring one another back in line. It is that community which is a community on the move that God seems to be dealing with. How do you bring back troublesome family members? How do you deal with troublesome church members? It is interesting that, or rather I should say, let us wait for next week when Joan will say something slightly different on this issue. But for now, I just want to focus on how Jesus lays it out. But first, the Old Testament reading. The people of Israel have been enslaved in Egypt for so long. The people of Israel have become used to the fact that their children were killed just at Pharaoh's whims. They have become used to the fact that they had so many bricks to carry. They had become used to how as slaves they were to behave. And when God says, I have come to, to break the chains of them, God says or gives them a new Passover, a Passover that begins with a change in time. No longer will you count the old times as part of your life. From now on, this becomes your day one, the Passover becomes your day one. I, I feel like saying, Jesus saying to us, from the day you accept me as your Lord and Savior, no longer will you have to count the past days. No longer will you have to count the old self as part of you. By being baptized, then your new life begins by being brought into the family, you start a new count that now speaks to you as my child. No longer think of your enslavement as part of your life because now I'm taking you on a new journey. This is what God says to the Israelites. From this day, begin counting anew. From this Passover, the year is new for you. As people of this new year, in the meal you celebrate, gird your loins, get ready. You are a people on the move. Even when you eat, eat hurriedly because we are on a journey. That's the community that God wants to build. That's a community that God wants to shape and to mold. A community that, gruesome as it sounds in the story, that God is ready to kill for. That God is ready to fight the battles against your enemy for. A community loved by God. That's what God emphasizes. And in this community, then Jesus says, but what happens when one of them or two of them just begin to quarrel? 
I say this because in the book of Matthew, the whole idea about church is begun when Jesus says, on this rock, I will build my church. On this statement that I am the Lord and Savior, I am the Messiah, I will build my church. And then what happens when one of those is just the troublemaker? When one of those seeks to just stir up trouble without fail, Jesus says and gives out a pattern. And I'm not for one who would say this is a pattern we will always have to use. I don't think Jesus was tying us down to that. But rather, listen to the pattern. There is a consistent seeking of bringing together of reconciling, of making up, of making sure the misunderstanding is dealt with. If you cannot agree one to another, bring in a witness who will help you listen, who will help you see that maybe there is an issue here and deal with that. If that doesn't work, Take it to the assembly, take it to the gathering, take it to the church and see how that works. Friends, it seems Jesus is saying, let's not easily give up on one another. Let's not easily seek to break community, but rather, because we know the cost on which this community was built, that he did not spare his own blood, but it was shared for us. How much more just for another member? How much more for just for another family member that we seek to bring them in? Now, here's what I'm saying is interesting, because to, today, Jesus says, when all this fails, then treat them like an outsider. But very soon in the story, as it will happen when we read the gospel next week, Peter again asks the question, how many times must I forgive? Then Jesus gives him a whole lot of sevens that he needs to deal with before you get to forgiveness. So it seems Jesus' aim is that we remain on the path of seeking reconciliation rather than to be distancing people from ourselves. It seems we, as people who are bought by the blood of Christ, need to be in a space where we always extend a hand to the other and say, how do we bring one another to a space of understanding? It's a tall order. It's a difficult ask. Sometimes, and sometimes I say, we live in a space where parting is the only healthy thing to do. I think Jesus is also aware of that that there are moments where you come into a space where you say we are healthier, we are safer apart than we are together. But the journey to that space must not come easy. It must not just be a case of I'm fed up now, I'm done. Keep working at it. Because our God did not give up on us, because our God did not say, you have sinned too much, that's it. Even then, he still said, I will give you yet another chance to make things right. 
Building a community is about dealing with all sorts of characters. Building a community is about bringing together, not saints, for none of us are saints. We bring baggage along with us. And it is for other people around us to deal with our baggage, to help us untangle it, and to help us come into a space where we share, even though we carry so much. And that's what being a brother and a sister is all about. Finding mutual space, finding mutual ground, and being able to find the Christ that brings us together. And then we say, we move on from here to proclaim that love to others. Because we live in a sick, sick world where people are caring so much. And sometimes when they carry a load, they turn to hurt other people with the stuff they carry. And Jesus reminds us we are called to help our brothers and sisters to carry their burdens. And it is not for us to carry their burdens, but to show them to the Christ who carries our burdens for us. Come to me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That is the assurance we are called to share. That is the love we are called to give to others. Seeking always, as Paul says, to live peacefully with one another. It's not easy. It is not easy. I can tell you, as a minister, I can tell you as the circuit superintendent, it's not easy. When you see people in church hurt and squabble with one another. When you see people in church turn to the media to bring not their names, not their minister's name, but to bring the name of the church to distribute. But Jesus says, even to those people, we keep extending a hand and say, there is a better way to deal with our disagreements. That is the community we are called to. I don't know who in your family, who in your church, who in your community, needs you to extend the hand, even though you're the one who's been wronged. But the challenge is for us to extend the hand. May God give us strength. And hands that are tough enough to not get burnt by some of those issues. Come, let us pray. And Barbara will lead us. My prayers today are based on the Exodus reading and the honoring of the Passover in Jewish families and their lives. Lord, as we continue in the pandemic of COVID-19, we remember all the thousands of people who have lost their jobs or their means of survival. That food for them is a desperate commodity and often there are children going to bed hungry and cold. And then there are some of us who can take a lamb for his family 
one for each house household. Help us, Lord, to hear and understand the need to share with their nearest neighbor and to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. May our hearts and minds be alerted to anyone that is desperate for a nourishing meal and may we be prompted by the Holy Spirit to commit to this prompting. Thank you, Lord, for the protection of your people at Parktown North and for the healing of those known to us who have been affected by this terrible virus. For those that have succumbed to this disease, we grieve for their families. We ask that in time they too will know and feel your care and love for them and indeed be assured of your protection over their lives. We especially pray for the Beer family today. Although Gerald had been in poor health for a while, it's always sad and so final when a partner of many, many years leaves them. We thank you for the life of Gerald, all that he was to us at Parktown North. May we all pray and support Jean and Trevor on Tuesday and in the weeks to follow. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you. Finally, Lord, in these days of virtual connectivity, I pray that we all will celebrate the festival of the Lord, a lasting ordinance. As we celebrate the act of worship today, may our Sunday worship be a lasting ordinance in all our lives. The act of praying, of giving generously of our wealth and time, the act of caring, of learning, of growing our relationship with our Lord. May these all be a lasting, sincere, and committed ordinance to us. We pray this, Lord, in your mighty name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Barbara, for that beautiful prayer. We come, friends, to the end of our service and want to thank you for having stayed with us and for continuing to tune in every morning as we celebrate and worship together. Thank Shall we you. say to and with each other, and now, now the, the grace of our Lord, 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 Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the, God, and the, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all, be with us all, now, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you, friends. Go well, and God bless you.